All right. Does anybody here? Does anybody here talk to themselves? All the time. Okay. We're not talking full-fledged arguments, just like a conversation going on. Right? It's wrong if you talk back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's handy now having that little gizmo in the air. Now people actually think you're having a conversation with somebody other than just yourself. So, because Margie did such an awesome job volunteering last time, we'll let her volunteer again. Show it up, Margie. Are you right handed or left handed? Right handed. Right handed. Okay, I'm going to get you to turn and face everybody. And what we're going to do is we're going to use your left arm. Okay. All right. I am going to push it down on your wrist and you're going to resist. Don't let me push it down. Okay, nice and strong. What kind of car do you drive? Mini Cooper. <laughs> I didn't mean to stress you out with a <laughs> tough question. All right. That was just to take her from where she was. All right. Now, um, I want you to say out loud, my name is Margie, and then resist. My name is Margie. All right. Nice and strong. Um, if you weren't driving that car, what would you be driving? Uh, BMW. A BMW. All right. Um, what I want you to say now is, my name is Sonata, and resist. My name is Sonata. So what, what's happening here? I can't. I can't. You can't. All right. There's no truth in that. There's no truth in that. So what did Margie just do? She lied to She us. lied. Yeah. Now, this is called behavior kinesiology, and it's just a uh, muscle testing. It's just a way to demonstrate that uh, whatever thought you think, every cell in your body will correspond to immediately. Mm -hmm. So when she lies, she disorients the, the system. All right, we'll give you another example here. Uh, all right, so just relax, relax. All right. How many times a day do you figure that Margie lies to herself? Many, 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 <laughs> many times, right? That's the norm. The bulk of our thinking will be negative, and every one of those tends to be a lie, right? So we will, will affect. So what are some typical lies that people will tell themselves? I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I can't do this. This is too big. It's beyond my capability. All this kind of crap goes through there. And what does it do to the body and the mind? It weakens, it weakens the focus, constantly. the ability to do that, right? So, all right, we'll do this up again. I want you to... Think of a time when you went after something and you got it. Nice, clear picture in your head. When you got that, nod, then resist. Okay, nice and strong. All right, the, uh, we'll go back to the car. You, we're gonna, you like the BMW? You said the BMW? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're, not, we're, we're not judging you. Okay, but, uh, the, <laughs> it's just a car. All right, now, think about a time when you, it was just a dismal failure. You were embarrassed. You just felt stupid. When you got a nice, clear picture in your head, nod, then resist. All right. There's nothing there. All right. Did you feel the difference? Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. So again, and when do we think these thoughts? Constantly. So you can see how the weakening. Uh, I teach other workshops like how to market yourself, and some of them are in their interview classes I teach too. And it's amazing how people are talking to themselves before they go into the interview, and they wonder why they can't focus and they can't do stuff. Well, all of that is happening in here. Mm -hmm. All right. You did awesome. I get oh, you to sit down. You. Now, what I had longer times with workshops in my, in my expanded workshops. One of the things I'd also get you to do, and now Margie, uh, she responded very well to, to, the, to the exercise. And what we would do is, I would have another volunteer come up, we'd have Jen come up, and what we'd do is, I'd be testing Margie, and then what I'd do is I'd have Jen flip up a picture. Well, Margie's being tested, and Margie would test weak immediately. The arm would just collapse. Now, like I said, I've been doing these workshops for a very long time, and the first time I started doing these exercises, this was shortly after the O.J. Simpson stabbing event. So all I had to do was flip up a picture of O.J. Simpson and people would go weak. Now what was interesting is the farther away we got from the incident, I had less and less and less impact on that picture. So pull that out and bring a new picture into the, into the system. The next picture that we brought in was 99% uh, of the people tested weak. One person actually got stronger when I showed the picture. Now the picture was somebody on an operating table and they're trying to sell, you know, it's an emergency room, they're trying to save this guy's life. Now one person actually got stronger in looking at that picture. Any guesses as to what the occupation was? Doctor. Close, it was emergency room nurse. She, she actually kicked into gear when she seen this opportunity. Now, I shouldn't have called it an opportunity, when this situation. Right? <laughs> Now, I, we pulled that picture out. Now, there was another picture I brought in. 100% of the people tested weak. Any guesses at what the picture was? Yeah. Hitler's a good guess. I have I know people still, that still consider him to be a great man, so it wouldn't have had that impact. No, the picture that I showed on every, with everybody that tested weak, police officer. So think about it. You're driving down the road, everything's cool, and you glance in the rearview mirror, and there's a police officer behind you, and all of a sudden, <sighs> oh, where is all that stuff happening? 
<laughs> between the years, right? So the impact has is very, very powerful. So we start this. Uh, the example would be is okay. What kind of pitcher do you have at home? Do you have stuff that makes you stronger or makes you feel weaker? Then you can test yourself on every one of these. So the idea is to always constantly surround yourself with stuff that.